Welcome to All Things Moore County, Moore County's weekly radio show highlighting the many facets of the Sand Hills. That includes real estate, lifestyle, community and neighborhoods. And now from four properties, here's your host, Bill Sahadi. Good morning and welcome to the talk show, All Things Moore County. Uh, Dorothy, um, we've had so many shows in the past with um, high school students. Yes. Uh, <laughs> even junior high school students. Yes. And they are some of the most uplifting shows we've had over the years we've been doing this. They have um, been a pleasure, yes. And um, so we'd love to highlight the students, especially those that are so proactive and are taking advantage of all the things that the schools offer them. Mm -hmm. um, but today we want to speak about the schools in a different vein, and it's in conjunction with the um, Moore County bond referendum uh, that is coming up on the 8th of May. Mm -hmm. And for people who are looking at social media or reading the paper, um, there's a tremendous amount of information um, being put out there for people to inform them. Even though it's going to be a light ballot mm -hmm. on May the 8th, th these are some of the most important issues. And the effort from the panel that I'm going to introduce has been stellar. Um, yeah. I remember when the quarter cent tax was being discussed a couple of years ago. Yeah, I remember that too. And it lost narrowly. Um, mm -hmm. And I think people would admit that they probably didn't do the best job of explaining it. People might have been confused. That's not going to be the case um, for these referendums uh, coming up on May the 8th. Let me introduce um, our panel from left to right. Helena Wallen-Miller is the chair of the Moore County Board of Education. Uh, and she was kind enough to come in and help coordinate this with us as is Connie Lovell, who is the chair of the Yes Campaign for the 2018 School and College Bond Committee. Uh, to her left, and Frank and George, you moved, but that's okay. <laughs> George Little, who is the chair of the Sand Hills Community College Board of Trustees and the chair of the fundraising committee for the bond campaign. Frank Quiss uh, is the commissioner, is a commissioner with the Moore County Board of Commissioners and was the past mayor of Southern Pines from 1998 to 2008. And between Frank and between George, I think you're going to hear a perspective today, unlike what maybe some of us who are newer to the game can provide, but very valuable perspective for sure. And um, sitting at the end of the table opposite me is Catherine Chow. Catherine is a mother of two. She's a retired military herself and a military spouse. And um, you're a member of the Military Family Connection. You're a volunteer. You have students in the school system. Um, and you were um, described as a volunteer extraordinaire. I just want to tell you that by <laughs> somebody sitting at this table. So you bring a lot of passion uh, to the room. And everyone seems to have a different reason for being here. Helena, I have to ask you, um, I'm so impressed with the effort, the marketing effort, um, no matter where I look, I'm seeing something written about the bond referendum coming up on May the 8th. This morning I was at Dunkin' Donuts. I'm picking, I do that every morning. Did the you bring pilot, those donuts? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> uh, in just today's pilot, there's an editorial, there's a, a public speaking letter to the editor, and there was an article about the um, the, the nursing uh, facility that the bond referendum also speaks about. You guys are doing an unbelievable job of getting the word out and educating people. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you. How do you, I mean, last night you had some events going on. We so did. this is a 24-7 activity. It does feel that way. Um, and I think the reason that that is is because this is really a historical election, a, a historical bond referendum. We have an opportunity with um, this bond referendum to really change the future of Moore County um, in terms of the types of educational uh, facilities that we provide for our elementary students and for our, our college. Um, one of the things that we're trying to get out, which I'm glad that you're giving us this opportunity to be on this show, is, is the n what we're doing. There are four schools in Southern Pines and Aberdeen um, that are very old. We have some folks at this table who will talk about it later who actually graduated from uh, some of these schools. So they're an average age of 72 years old, and our Southern Pine schools and our Aberdeen schools um, will be closed, and we will open two new schools that are uh, modern, built to modern safety standards and for 
modern learning. Uh, things have changed so much over time. And then we want to replace uh, Pinehurst Elementary, too, because it is not only an older facility, but also overcrowded. Mm -hmm. um, and then the nursing uh, bond is equally important. Um, we need to have a facility to support our nursing education here in Moore County so we can have um, we can have more nurses in Moore, Moore County and, and educated in a, in a way that is needed for today's, today's hospital systems. Um, question I have, when the quarter cent sales tax um, barely didn't pass, had it passed, would these referendums be on the table today? I, I don't know if I can answer that is question. That, I'll I, let I believe I can answer Frank. that. Yeah. Uh, I'll Thank give you. it a try. Uh, we would still be here today uh, seeking a bond referendum, uh, perhaps a smaller amount, but okay. the revenue that would have been generated by the quarter cent sales tax increase had it passed would have equated to approximately $2,200,000 per year, which is a lot of money, but that is just a small part of the capital needs that our schools face today. So we'd still be here had that passed or not, but it, it uh, is something to consider in the future and we'll uh, focus today, this month, on the bond issue. And the demographics in Moore County have changed so much since you were mayor um, in Southern Pines, 1998 up to 2008, and the schools are getting overcrowded. They are, uh, some in particular. Uh, they're, uh, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll speak in terms of modern times, and George can speak since the creation. Right, prehistoric times. <laughs> I understand. He, uh, he has a wealth of knowledge uh, okay. and um, can certainly tell us his experience in the schools here, which uh, I know was, was a great experience. But to your point, the, uh, the communities in the southern end of the county, Aberdeen, Pinehurst, Southern Pines, have seen a significant growth in the last 25 years. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> most recently, the last four or five years, we have had an increase in military families that have been uh, based at Fort Bragg, uh, many of the Special Forces families who've been in the military for a number of years, kind of know the ropes, you know, where do you want to live when you, when you transfer to this base or that base, and words out that Southern Moore County is a very attractive place to live. Right. Parts of the central and eastern part of the county are also attractive. The vast Cameron uh, Lakeview area mm -hmm. are closer to Fort Bragg, uh, and in the vast Lakeview School and the farm life school uh, near Whispering Pines, uh, those areas have seen significant growth. They're overcrowded, and uh, Helena can address that in more detail, but uh, that is primarily where the growth has been. Um, military families are different than the families that moved here in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, which were retirees. They, their children were grown and gone and the needs in the public schools were not nearly as great as they are today with the younger families. And right. it, I will say, having been mayor during part of the time, the, the young families that move here have brought a real vibrance. Uh, 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 they were great contributors to the fabric of our community. Yeah. George, you have, um, you have a storied history with the school system in Moore County, and, and I don't mean just you, but some of your um, ancestors and, and relatives. Oh, yes. Uh, my grandmother was one of the first students in the Southern Pine system when it was created in the 1880s. And, uh, she might have been her a classmate. Her family, the, Scarborough, <laughs> the Scarborough family was listed as one of the prominent families to uh, justify the establishment of the Southern Pine system. And then, of course, uh, I've gone through it, my children have gone through it, and uh, my grandchildren now. So uh, so I'm very much aware. I've been very active in it, uh, in the system. I've, this is my, I don't know how many bond issues I've been involved in, but the first one was in 1986. And uh, I've done every bond issue since that time for the schools and the college. So, um, Let me ask a layman's question. Can you explain the difference between a bond and a tax increase? 
for people who might they see bond i don't know that everyone okay. always understands um, the bond the bond is the vehicle that provides the money for the schools okay and for the college okay the the bond is is so many million dollars that money is then given to the entity to build that that building and provide those facilities and the uh the uh the tax is the money that pays for that bond okay um you're a hand talker like i am yeah. and i'm i always resist the urge but um it always shows your passion when you're speaking right. Right? Um, i'm a salesman also so uh, <laughs> <laughs> and i'm proud of it yes, yes. i came from uh, the state of new jersey where property taxes were much higher and the public school systems <clears throat> were um, quite good. Um, and um, I moved here and I always tell people, because I'm in the real estate business, what a fair tax base we have here. And taxes have been not been raised for eight, ten years? Ten years. Ten years. Um, and now um, jobs and schools are the two most important ingredients for any um, engine to run and Moore County has become an engine, um, and I, you all feel like the time is now. There, there's no time to wait. We can't put, kick this can down the road anymore. Frank? Well, kicking the can down the road is a perfect way to explain where we are today, and that's what's happened. Uh, there's been inaction in replacing these very old schools. Uh, I've toured each one as have uh, all the commissioners, and to a person, we just shake our head and say, gosh, we're really way behind. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Right. These schools will be replaced, whether there's a bond passage or not. They have to be. Right. They're 70 plus years old. Right. And the bond affords us the lowest cost vehicle for financing these schools. And I, I can't say that enough, and perhaps because of the good management that previous boards of commissioners have have uh, exhibited in their financial management of the county, we have an excellent bond rating. It's a double A rating, which is near the top. That allows us to borrow money at some of the lowest possible rates there are. And today, as you know, I believe most folks understand that interest rates are near historic lows so it's time to take advantage of that so the um, the old adage there's risk but there's also educated risk and and this is a very educated risk is it not uh, it is very much an educated risk <clears throat> because the uh, amount of debt that Moore County presently has is very low as a percentage of our tax base it's approximately $68 million in total, and that would include some of the debt for the community college mm -hmm. facilities that uh, Moore County is responsible for. So given that past financial frugality mm -hmm. that, that uh, we've all come to benefit from, mm -hmm. we've had a very low tax rate uh, that we enjoy today, but we've got to face the future and... and uh, um, we're in a good position financially to I do so. I would say the risk is in letting this opportunity get by us. I mean, we have the time, uh, we have the talent, and uh, we have the children and the, and the first health organization that needs nurses. So uh, our risk is in not passing this bond this time. Yeah. Connie uh, Lovell, you're the chair of the Yes campaign for the... Um, school and college bond committees. How did you get involved in this? <laughs> met you the other day down at the, yes. um, oh, yes. the storefront where you have a like campaign headquarters yes. set up. Yes, 157 Northeast Broad. And you're, you, you're a Michigan <laughs> transplant. I am. And you have a lot of passion. Where did it come from and why are you here? <laughs> well, I can quite honestly tell you I didn't know what a bond was in December. <laughs> so, uh, but George, my friend here, and uh, Dr. Dempsey, uh -huh. apparently decided that I was a person that could be the whip. And that's really essentially what I do. Of course, I have children and grandchildren, and so I'm passionate about their education, but uh, right. I'm passionate about our lifestyle here in Moore County. We chose, we chose to live here. We love it here. We are not leaving here. And uh, so 
it's our privilege to right. to uh, enhance this enhance this county. Yeah, you um, you're, you're sitting on the cusp of an opportunity and. You're grabbing it with all the enthusiasm of a, of a college age <laughs> recruit. Why, thank you. No, you are. <laughs> you are. And um, Catherine Chow, I wanted to introduce you as well. You have a couple. Uh, you moved here um, as a military um, spouse, and you were active military yourself. Yes. And today you have um, students in the school system. Yes, I have one high schooler. He's a junior at Union Pines High School. I have a elementary school kindergartner at Santos Farm Life, and I also have a preschooler who is four years old. How did you evolve to be at this table? How did you get? Um, you're a volunteer, but you uh, you seem to bring a lot of energy to the uh, effort. Yes, I I want schools number Starts one. Beautifully. I am. Um, I my uh, history is back. Uh, goes to Ellicott City, Maryland, where schools were uh, held to a very high standard, and it was an importance which was shared among the community. It was understood that the reason why we live in Howard County, Maryland, is because of the schools, and we're willing to do anything we can to make sure our future generations right. are prepared. Right. Um, the um, the tax base in Moore County will only prosper if this if these referendums go through because of future growth, right? And that's where the educated risk comes in. You, you look at I don't even think you would say it's educated risk. It's necessary action. It is, and Connie made a very good point yeah. to the risk to the community. Uh huh. And uh, I'm speaking more of a, from a financial background, but. Connie's point's the most important. It's a, a risk that we don't pass these bonds and build these schools right. and, and and support our education infrastructure. Um, Helena and the school board have been studying this, working on this for years. It's not, it's something we want. It's something we need. Right. I've seen the schools. Many of you have. Right. Anyone, any of your listeners that took the time to visit some of these schools would want to sit at this table and say, what can I do to help change the situation? With the average age of those schools, the ones that we're talking about, the, we have the five schools consolidating to three new ones, and the average age of the five schools is over 70 years. So, so the technology isn't there to support our new <clears throat> 21st century learning. So by voting yes on both bond issues... Um, and this, in particular, more county schools, you're going to be reducing the number of schools yeah. from five to three? Correct. Mm -hmm. I bet you people don't realize that. And that's I, an important correct. thing. Correct. That's an important part of this education campaign is making sure that that is clear and what that benefits us because we'll no longer need, we can consolidate principals, we can consolidate assistant principals, data managers, that type of thing. We still need the same number of teachers. That's not going away. Right. But one building um, for K-5 for each of these communities. Right. We're going to come back in the second set. Uh, May 8th um, is the voting date for the Moore County bonds for the elementary schools and the community college. Um, it's an effort for safer schools, economic growth, and an improved quality of life. We'll be right back. Yes. That's <laughs> Welcome back to All Things Moore County. Um, our conversation today is all about the upcoming uh, bond referendum on May the 8th. And in the first set, we, um, we spent some time focusing on the elementary schools. And we want to shift gears just a little bit. Um, and George Little is the chair of the Sand Hills Community College Board of Trustees. And he's also the chair of the fundraising committee for the bond campaign. Um, you have a lot of um, strong feelings and a lot of support for the addition of a new nursing center, which is the second part of the bond that would be coming up for vote on May the 8th, George. Yes, uh, you know, health care is our number one industry. And uh, at Sand Hills, we prepare and train the nurses that go to work at First Health. Uh, many of them come from Sand Hills. Right. And we've had a nursing program since the 70s. Well, guess what? Those facilities are 1970s. So we've got to expand those facilities so we can expand our program, but also modernize them and, uh, and bring them up to date. 
And so, so that's, that's what this is about. Healthcare is our number one industry. Last year we graduated 61 nurses. All 61 had jobs at First Health. That's We're going to graduate 60 to 61 this year, and all of those will have jobs also. And that, that's very important. Also, we have a relationship with four-year universities, so they continue right on and get their four-year degrees while they're working. And that, that, that really works good. And we have some uh, financial incentives that help them do that. So, uh, so we've, we've covered both ends of the spectrum in training the nurses, getting them through the school, getting them graduated, and then uh, assuring their future for them. It's not just a physical facility that you're talking about. It's also advanced technological uh, advances in technology that are so important that are lacking today. Right. If someone could go through our lab and see the mannequins, uh -huh. it's a real life situation. I mean, these mannequins, I was standing Monday night next to one, he was having a heart attack. A mannequin was. And, and they teach the nurses how to respond to that. And uh, it was interesting to see that. And mm -hmm. Many of our trustees had not seen that. That I'd been up there many times, but they had not. So, uh, so they were learning to see how we do it. The, uh, the new building, Connie? I think, will provide an opportunity for more nurses to experience right. that simulation. So, while we're training, uh, you know, our numbers of, of of students can increase because our ability to train them in simulation circumstances will increase. So we'll be able to fill the shortage of nurses here at a more rapid rate. And Catherine made the point. Um, you get an opportunity to keep uh, these Moore County residents in Moore County. Yes, we'll train our own residents and we'll keep the talent in the area, which right. I think is a very valuable asset. Right. How long have you lived in here in Moore County? Almost two years. Well, two years is a lifetime in Moore County, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> no, isn't it? Don't you, don't you find that after two years how quickly you can get embellished into the networking and the community? Yes, and I feel very passionately about many of the problems that are coming uh, with the schools, and that's why I was very avid and s to support this this bond campaign. Who designed your beautiful T-shirt? I think it was a group effort. I the think campaign it's designed it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I wanted to add I something too about Atlanta? this hospital discussion, um, and I'm yeah. not sure if this is well known. Personally, I moved here 14 years ago, and there are two reasons why we moved here. Um, well, three, if you include the fact that we wanted a better quality of life, which was really the number one reason in terms of not being in a big metropolitan city, but having some amenities and opportunities. Um, First Health was where my husband found his job um, in terms of employment because we needed to find employment. But the number, the second thing we looked at before we looked, after we looked at where we could work was where our kids would go to school. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at, you were talking about an economic driver, right, mm -hmm. that our health uh, community here in Moore County is, um, it is something that if we want to keep our, our nurses here, we want to keep um, our businesses that are currently here, if they want to hire employees, it's not just about health, it's also about keeping our employees here, um, having great educational opportunities for them. Our elementary schools, our middle schools, our high schools are key to that. Um, and so, you know, we've stayed here. We love this community and just so proud to call it home, mm -hmm. um, given all that we have. I've been very impressed by all the um, uh, publicity, the, the editorials. There seems to be a groundswell of support, um, yet y you all feel the need to put a Herculean effort together to keep we the do. message out there. We do. Why? Because there's some people that I think that... I'm a perfect example of the person who retired here. Uh -huh. We've educated our children. We moved here. The, you know, the property uh, taxes are low. It's all good. Uh, I'm concerned that there's that there are other people who feel like they've been there, done that, and don't have don't recognize the responsibility that they have to uh, invest in our community in that way. So, and and. Given the opportunity that we have, can you imagine uh, coming away on May 9th and thinking, gosh, if I'd only, if I had only? None of us can do that. None of us want to do that. So anything that's before us that we can accomplish is, is that's what we're doing. And educating, we talk about yard signs and so forth, and May 8th being the voting date, but educating our community is what this campaign has been all about. We talk, we have speaking engagements 
at least one a day mm -hmm. until May 8th, mm -hmm. and probably two and three. Mm -hmm. Six yesterday. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, we're enjoying that. We are learning so much in our community. Right. What, what is a, a, a big point that, that's always come out in these bond issues. Uh, my wife's a retired teacher and, uh, and, and a grandparent, and she says, we have a lot of grandparents living here who grandchildren are living elsewhere. Right. We need the grandparents here to support our bond issue, and hopefully that our people are supporting their bond that's issues true. where they live. Mm -hmm. and, and that's always been a key element. Our retired population here has always come out and supported us and helped us in, uh, do the things that we need to do for the college and the schools. So the retired population here benefits if both of these bonds pass because it will um, indirectly or directly increase or at least give them the opportunity to increase their property values. Yes. Um, and so there's a benefit whether you have children here or not. Right. right. Or whether you have uh, nurse can nursing candidates right. here or not. Right. Frank? Well, I completely agree with what you said. Uh, to personalize it a little more, retirees will need health care. Right. At the hospital it's or maybe a local doctor's office. Great or point. Nursing home. Nursing home. <laughs> to better prepare the young adults for further education, be it at Sand Hills or a four-year degree, whatever, to to move this larger number of nurses through Sand Hills mm -hmm. and into the local medical community mm -hmm. will, I think, give the retirees a confidence that these children, these young adults, are well educated. Mm -hmm. They're prepared mm -hmm. to take care of me. Let's let's face it. We're we're getting older. That's a couple right. of us are, <laughs> and uh, um, that is a concern, I believe, for for many folks who are looking at the quality of the health care in Moore County. So it's a win-win, regardless of what generation you come from. Yeah, that's it. Right that's across it. the board. Yes, we yeah. all win. We all win. Um, what kind of response are you getting in these public appearances and these informational sessions that you're holding, Connie? I think it's been quite remarkable. Yeah. We, we met with the with the more Republican women uh -huh. on Monday. Uh -huh. uh, Helena and I went for a, a luncheon, and uh, Catherine Graham was there. It was very exciting and, and lots of good response. And also some very good questions from the audience. So I would say that, you know, we probably out of 120 or 30 women, we probably saw... 110 who were interested and so forth, but then there were some excellent questions coming out too. Helena? Well, and what I love about all these uh, meetings that we've been going to, we've been going to civic clubs, we've been going to town council meetings, we've been going to churches, um, we've been going to real estate offices, um, and all of the, the conversations have been um, people want to know about what the bonds will do, how it will impact their community, um, and want to know how they can help, which has been um, just, for me, mm -hmm. a, a wonderful opportunity to connect with folks all around the county um, and answering these questions and to see how passionate folks are for our community and what they want to do to make sure that it's better. Um, so I have found that these, uh, all of these opportunities have been ones that um, have been very worthwhile, as exhausted as we might mm -hmm. be, but it's completely things, worth it. Yeah, one of the things that happens in Moore County that uh, I came from a, uh, Birmingham, Michigan, so near Detroit, right? And so you could, anything we did uh, was not as significant as anything I can do here. So when I dive in and do a campaign like this or, uh, you know, work at the college or fund something like that, I can actually see the result of that happening. And I think many of us feel passionate about Moore County because it's a manageable community. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see the results of your investment. Mm -hmm. In addition to the, um, the sessions that you're holding all over the county, you've opened up some um, headquarters on Broad Street in downtown Southern Pines where people can stop in, and what will they see there? Uh, well, we have all of our campaign uh, materials, all the stickers and, and excitement that's building. Uh, we're starting our phone banks starting on Saturday. We have a big rally in Aberdeen on Friday, and then on Saturday we'll start to open hours, and we'll be phoning and getting the vote out. That's, that is the critical point, okay. getting people to vote yes. When we come back in the third set, um, Dorothy's winding me down. Um, 
I'm curious as to what some of the questions that come up, maybe from some naysayers, and what they are and how you handle them. And I'm also interested in if this bond passes, uh, what it will do to the property taxes as we go forward um, and what people can expect. And Frank will probably talk with you about that. Um, this is All Things More County. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our final set of All Things More County and um, our wrap-up all about the uh, Moore County bond referendum that's coming up for voting on May the 8th. Um, we've covered a lot of topics today from the elementary schools to the community college. Um, interestingly enough, Helena, the ballot is so very clear this year when people go. It, it explains exactly what they're voting for. Uh, no misunderstandings, no confusion, no deer in the headlights look this year? Exactly. That's the one thing we're very excited about in terms of the language on the ballot. It's so much easier to read. And there will be four ballots. Um, there are two Republican ballots, there's one Democratic ballot, and there's one nonpartisan ballot. The important thing about that I want to mention is that for unaffiliated voters, and Moore County has a large number of unaffiliated voters here, right. um, which means uh, for the primary election, what that means is that they could pick any one of these four ballots, when they go into the voting area, they will have the option to pick any one of these four ballots. Um, and each one of them has uh, the bond referendum on them. So uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for our unaffiliated voters to get engaged and show up to vote beginning um, April 19th to the 5th at the Agricultural Center in Moore County, mm -hmm. and then uh, on May 8th itself. Okay. Um, at the end of the day, um, People just want to know how much this is going to cost, um, what kind of effect it's going to have in people's pocketbook, in their pocket, and uh, it's a good question to ask. Frank? Well, Bill, it's a fair question, and I think that's something everyone is uh, concerned about. We, we uh, at the county level, take it very seriously uh, how we manage the budget, and as a member of the budget committee, I took the liberty of checking with our tax department and getting some st statistics, which I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples in just a few moments about what difference in terms of dollar outlay right. the average homeowner would experience if the bonds pass. Um, but first let me make it very clear that the economy in Moore County is very healthy. We have a very strong tax base, residentially and commercially. The tax base is approximately $12,500,000,000. It's growing. Um, initial estimates are that we'll have uh, perhaps a 2% growth in the tax base this next year. Uh, there are 33,000 residential homes in Moore County. Last year we added 700. Mm -hmm. um, for the average home, which is a three bedroom, two bath, the value is $219,000. Mm -hmm. That's, That's very wide. You're, you're right on. $219,000. I'll give you an example of a $300,000 home in, in a few minutes, but, <clears throat> or a few moments. Um, the county financial advisors estimate that with the passage of the bond, $123 million for the schools and the college, that would increase our tax rate five and a half to eight cents per hundred dollars valuation. For that homeowner, the average at 219000 that would mean an increase, if it's on the low end of five and a half cents, mm -hmm. $10 a month added tax cost. $120 a year. Correct. If it were to be at the high end, which is eight cents, that would mean a $15 per month increase in their taxes. Mm -hmm. 180. If we take an example of a $300,000 valued home in Moore County, 
And these are just more county taxes, not municipal taxes. Right. Uh, the increase would be $14 per month, approximately, up to $20 per month if it's on the high end. We're hopeful that we're going to be on the low end because of the increasing tax rate base. I'm sorry. We're hopeful we'll be on the low end, that five and a half, because of the increasing tax base, the increasing valuations, and uh, prudent management of the spending of these, <coughs> these dollars. So we're in a good position. Um, interest rates are still good. Uh, but I hope that would answer any listeners' questions about what it's going to cost them. So at the high end of what you just quoted, about $240 a year, and at the low end, 120 Approximately. And it all depends on the value of your own home. Right. Yes. Have you seen your cable TV bills lately? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. Sure. That's like putting money into yourself and nobody else as opposed to putting it into almost like a, a mutual fund uh, for Moore County, an asset that would reap rewards. Um, if you look at it that way, th that's a very small impact on, on homeowners um, and one that's very w – you're investing in, in the county's future and in your future property values. But we're also investing in those children. So that's I right. think we Obviously. really want to – express to you how exciting it is to have these buildings uh, in the design phase and Helena can speak to that. Oh you know one of the things I tell everybody about the buildings when you go by them now that they're 72 years old we talked about that an average age of 72 years old there's a lot of facilities um, improvement that you could see from the outside but on the inside there's fantastic learning engagement excitement going on what these new buildings will do for these children, though, is give them the proper space and the safe place to learn. They'll be single um, point of entry buildings for visitors, so there'll be just one way to get in for visitors. Um, we will have uh, the children won't have to walk across a field to get to their gymnasium or to get to their cafeteria or to get to their media center. Um, all our old buildings were built as high schools, so those are built with a campus-like feel. That's right. um, and, uh, and they were built all in the 1930s and 40s. I know you don't remember all that way back there, Bill, but um, <laughs> they were built as larger campuses, and the opportunity to now consolidate um, these campuses into one building for 800 students that is safe and secure and appropriate for learning uh, will have efficient heating and air, con air conditioning systems that will save us a lot of operational costs going forward um, and just being sure that the kids have the, the a place to learn where they can um, you know f crawl on the floor or talk you know meet on the floor mm -hmm. they can um, uh, a lot of learning happens in groups mm -hmm. a lot of uh, group projects um, that we have the technology available to bring into the classroom, smart boards, computers. All of that is really challenging right now with our old electrical systems, um, bringing in the technology and the, the type of supports these kids need. So these buildings are, are really going to represent to Moore County what we want to invest in our children, and I think it's going to show them um, exactly uh, what their future can look like. And that's, that, to me, is very exciting to have these appropriate safe buildings for these children and by reducing the number of schools <clears throat> from five to three you're reducing administrative costs mm -hmm. you're you're running much more um, efficiently mm -hmm. obviously because it's one instead of it's two instead of five right no, it's uh, three, three instead three, of five three instead of five mm -hmm. um, and the utility bills will be much more reduced. You're talking about geothermal? Yes, we're going to be doing it, geothermal, which in long term will save us a lot, a, a of, lot money. of money over time. And that's a smart investment <clears throat> for our, our children. Yeah. And for, you know, and that actually lowers our taxes, right? If, if you think about it, for, a, for our tax base, being able to have operational um, savings is going to help us in the long run. So imagine this, it's geothermal and not a boiler system, which is what we're working with now. Right. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Right. And it w air conditioning units in some of our windows is what we currently see in some of these buildings, and that's not an efficient use of, of heating and cooling. Yeah, we, um, on the real estate end, we get to be, as brokers, sometimes the first point of contact for people who are coming into Moore County. And they're coming from different areas, maybe in the state, and uh, we get to be stewards of uh, all of this and how important it is for, it's all about the kids at the end of the day yes the buildings yes the saved utilities 
But the parents want to know that their children are going to be in a school system and environment or their students are going to have the ability to graduate, um, get into the health field build, uh, business, stay with First Health, um, and um, stay here in Moore County, as you've said. So there's so many pluses. Um, in all your conversations, the um, questions that come up, are there any questions that come up that um, you have to answer that might be from a naysayer's point of view, or is it is a response been pretty uniform and positive? I'd say it's been pretty uniform and positive. So most of the most of the thirty questions come with uh, Frank. What Frank explained today, okay. uh, and he's much better at it than I am because I let my emotions get involved, and and Frank was very <clears throat> good about being specific. Uh, I really only hear that as as the uh, the, que the hard questions. In, Frank, what's the history of tax increases in Moore County in the last ten or fifteen years? Well, there really have not been any tax increases, and we it's have crazy. a very low tax rate, yeah, which do. is which is great. But it's been at the expense of ignoring building new schools, and Moore County government is responsible for the buildings of our public schools as well as Sand Hills yes. Community College. So uh, that's been neglected. We're ready to step up and, and yeah. uh, the commissioners have uh, recently passed a resolution supporting this bond. So we're all in and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like the community is too once they understand what it is they're being asked to vote for. Yeah, and I have to say, since I moved here in 1999, <coughs> Sandhills Community College has become a juggernaut in Moore <laughs> County. In so many ways, It um, not so much when I had first moved here, but today it's the center of a lot of conversations. So many of our Moore County students are impacted by the programs that they offer where the kids can stay and get their college credits. Um, it's become an integral part of this county. Um, I only have a 20 year, I didn't start here in 1880. <laughs> I started here in 1999. <laughs> but but um, it, it's a very impressive, um, it has a very impressive presence. Um, We're very proud of it. Very I, proud. Extremely. It's the, it's the best community college in North Carolina. So May 8th is just a couple of weeks away, three weeks away I'm imagining. So if people want to go online, um, give me the um, sure. website address where I'd they can get more to. information. Okay. So the website is yesformorebonds.com. Uh, you can email us at info at yesformorebonds.com. You can find the ballot. You can find all of the different initiatives that we've taken in order to get the vote out. Uh, you can donate online very easily. Helena made a point. All of what you're doing costs a lot of money. It does. It does. It's printing. It's uh, printing. Mailing. And then there's some more printing involved. So mailing, of course, Yard too, signs. And, and all of that. So uh, I can tell you that our volunteer staff has been incredibly generous with their own funds uh, in, in terms of in-kind contributions, but anything that, you know, $50 can make is a is a pretty good donation for printing so we'd welcome anything and it's easy to do uh at our website and plus it gets you all the other information and uh we'd love to we'd love to see you we'd love to see you there come give us a click yeah. one of the um tenants of the show which i've had a privilege to host for eight or nine years is that moore county is a great place to live everyone at this table shares that uh, sentiment and um, it's great to see we're, as we move forward, um, we're changing, we're adapting, we're accommodating, um, and we're growing. And this is smart growth. And I hope everybody um, gets out on May the 8th and um, votes for these more county bond referendums. They're so important to our future. Um, I just want to thank each one of you for coming and joining us. Um, Catherine Chow, um, yes. thank, you, um, thank you for your advocacy. Yes. Um, they're going to keep you busy the next couple of weeks, aren't they? <laughs> yes, sir, and I'm ready. But I'm ready. You don't get ruffled, though. I don't <laughs> see wrong. that. You she, every, everything we ask of Catherine, <clears throat> she says, oh, sure, I can do that. She says yes. She says yes. Good, <laughs> good point. <laughs> it's 
it's so important to make this happen for our kids, for our future generations. Right. It's the best thing we can do to ensure the success of our children. You just set a nice tenant. I'm going to go around the table and just ask each one of you for a closing statement. Frank Quist, thanks for coming and uh, talking with us today. Well, thanks for having me, Bill. It's been a, uh, a privilege. And I would fi finally say that I've given you some numbers. Yeah. I really feel the most important thing is what this means for the children, but selfishly. Let's mm -hmm. think about health care. We think about the quality of life. Mm -hmm. But these new schools will give these children a leg up, and that's good for everyone. Yeah, well said. Thank you so much. And George Little, you're the chair of the Sand Hills Community College Board of Trustees and very passionate about the nursing program. Vote yes. That's <laughs> it, huh? That's right it. to the point. That's it. Um, we won't let you down. No. I, no, we're there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Connie Lovell, um, you're going to be a busy lady these next couple of weeks. I know. I've been busy. I've been much more than I ever do expected. You, I had to sort of gear up. Do you sleep? <laughs> I sleep from, uh, no. <laughs> I sleep a little bit, and then I wake up about 2, and I'm awake until about 4, going through my checklist, and then I'm back on the computer at 6. My husband is like, where are you? Right. People can come and see you downtown on Broad Street and Southern yes. Pines. Yes, yes, please come. Okay, okay. Very exciting spot. Thank you. And uh, Helena, uh, Helena Wallen Miller, the chair of the Moore County Board of Education. This isn't the first time you've been on. Um, this means a lot to you, and it, y y you've been, y you're quiet and you move forward. You're like water, you just keep running. Right? That's a good, good way to say it. And I think if I have one more thing to say, I would say, this is really a historical yeah. election. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity to make a change here for our kids in terms of providing them with the accurate and, and appropriate facilities for them. That's what I'm passionate about. I really want that for our kids, and I would like anybody to come and join us. I'd like everybody to come and join us. Please volunteer. So please show up, yes. Yes. Show up at our volunteer. campaign office, We'd love email to us, you. become involved, because yeah. we each can make a difference. Every vote counts. There are a lot of people, a lot of people rooting for you all. Mm -hmm. um, you. We'll see you on May the eighth at the at the uh, ballot box. Thank you for having us. Thank my, you. My Thank pleasure, you. guys. It was a pleasure with all of you. Um, see you on May eighth uh, for the Moore County bond referendums. So many good reasons to move forward and uh, to keep Moore County the great place that it is. This is all things Moore County. <laughs>